So decomposing rational expressions is the opposite of combining them. So like if you had 1 over x plus 3 over x minus 3, and we want to know what that is if we were to combine the fractions, we would be thinking what's a common denominator. Well, this side is missing an x minus 3, and this side is missing an x. So now, when I write the right side, I have a common denominator where they both are over x times x minus 3. And on the top, I have 1 times x minus 3 plus 3 times x. This is really x minus 3 plus 3x on top. And so this is going to turn out to be 4x minus 3 all over x times x minus 3. And so we are used to going this way. Decomposition is when they give you this and they need you to go back to partial, what, they're, what are called partial fractions. So why would we ever do this? Well, there are certain reasons to do this, especially in calculus. When you're integrating, you don't want to integrate something here. But if you break it apart, it makes it a lot easier. Anyway, let's actually show how this would work in this problem. They would give you 4x minus 3 all over x times x minus 3. Or they might not even do that. They may be giving you x squared minus 3x. And you would know that you have to factor the bottom first. And then you'll notice in this problem, the factors at the bottom are your possible denominators. So I know this is going to be some number all over x plus some number all over x minus 3. And now my job is to figure out what a and b are. Now we know what they are. a is going to be 1 and b is 3, but let's pretend like we don't. <clears throat> and you're going to get this, the same kind of process that we did here. What we're going to start doing is setting this so that they have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by x minus 3 and this by x. It's kind of going backwards by combining. We just don't know what a and b are. So on top, I'm going to have ax minus 3a plus bx, and that's going to be all over x times x minus 3. Now once we're at this point, we have common denominators all the way across. So I can actually ignore the denominators for a bit while we're solving. Now if you look at the top though, ax and bx, if you combine them, should equal 4x. And so we know that a plus b should be 4. Similarly, negative 3a should equal what's left over over there too, 3. These are just like terms. So negative 3a equals negative 3. Now, normally we would have a more complicated system, but it turns out that if you just solve this, you get a right away. So a is going to be a 1. And then you can plug it in right here to figure out that b is equal to 3. So I know that it's going to be 1 over x plus 3 over x minus 3. Now this shouldn't surprise us because that's what we had up here. But this is a demonstration of how it's broken up backwards. So here's one for you to try. Let's say that you started off with negative 3x squared minus 8x plus 10 all over this. I'll let you try this. We know that we're going to have three possible denominators based on the factors. We're going to have x x minus 5 and x minus 2. Now, we know that it'll be a, b, and c up there. Our job is to figure out a, b, and c. Okay, so you should try, try this out. And actually, one really cool thing here is that if you are ever in doubt about your answer, you can take this right here, type in decompose, and type this in into like Wolfram Alpha. And Wolfram Alpha will actually be able to check your answer for you. So I would solve it and give it a shot.